It is a tragic story which leaves a lot of questions. A three year old girl is dead after she was bitten by a rattlesnake in northern Nevada. Now the family is angry with a hospital that first treated the girl, claiming she could have survived. Karen Bush Jose talked to the family who says they are in disbelief. Buddy. And everybody seemed to meet her and love her. Alyssa Johnson was just three years old when she passed away from a rattlesnake bite a few days ago. Her and her family were walking near their home in Winnemucca when she was bitten. And he caught her calm within a second and started running with her and kept her calm. Alyssa was immediately rushed to the Humboldt General Hospital where the family says she was denied life-saving anti-venom for three and a half hours. They say doctors said Alyssa didn't need the treatment. They, they told us both that they had it. That she didn't need it. The family says after three hours at the hospital, the decision was made to rush Alyssa to a renowned medical center in Reno by ambulance. But her family says her condition only got worse. You know, they're the, they're the experts, you know. And then I was like, she's not breathing right. And I start rubbing her chest and they said, just keep stimulating her. Just keep stimulating her. At Renown, Johnson says staff there gave her anti-venom three times, but it was too late. Alyssa eventually passed away in the hospital. The Johnsons now say Humboldt staff were negligent and now they want change. Humboldt County, we need a hospital here. We need a real hospital here that has good training. We're hearing too many stories of how horrible it is. We contacted Humboldt Hospital and left messages twice with their public relations department. We've not heard back from them yet. As for Alyssa Johnson's family, they say at this point they only want change and a better system so something like this doesn't happen again. Well, Clark County says it's a priority to do rigorous testing on small rural communities like here in Laughlin, and this week they were able to do just that. Laughlin, Nevada, an unincorporated Clark County town, a place where about 7,000 people call home and where less than five residents tested positive for COVID-19, according to the Southern Nevada Health District. But Jackie Maceo, president of the Laughlin Chamber of Commerce, says that number may be higher as locals have had difficulty accessing testing. They could cross the bridge and go into Arizona if they would accept a Nevada residence. Otherwise, they'd have to go all the way to Las Vegas. Laughlin isn't alone. We've only tested 1% of our county. Mayor Daniel Corona of West Wendover, Nevada, says his town needs more access to testing, too. If we're only testing 1% of our residents, how are we supposed to know the impact of this virus? It's a plea public health officials are responding to. Earlier this week, Did he cough, shortness of breath. The health district, in partnership with Clark County and the Laughlin Chamber, organized a pop up drive through site in Laughlin, testing locals with or without COVID 19 symptoms. We have a really large retirement community here. So it was very important for us to get involved to make sure that they're taken care of. Says Clark County Commissioner Michael Naft, who reports the Laughlin site administered just under 900 nasal swab tests in two days. Dr. Thomas Hunt says there's generally less access to medical care in remote areas, and they also tend to have higher populations of senior citizens vulnerable to the virus. So one of the things that we've seen with coronavirus is there's a sub-segment of people who get really sick who require ICU care and very high levels of care. Rural communities may provide some of this care, but it can be very quickly and easily overwhelmed. Diligent testing, he says, can prevent this from happening and important, he says, because the virus and its spread will continue to impact all areas, no matter the size. It's going to touch every community in one way, shape or form. Craft House Brewery here in Henderson didn't open their doors until two days ago. They say simply because they weren't ready. They've had to change their whole business model, including an outdoor patio to give customers more options. We did shut down for two weeks in the very beginning, but we kept having a lot of people asking about curbside or when can we open. Craft House Brewery founders Wendy and Dave Forrest say overnight they turned their tap room of more than five years to an online order business. We wanted to be sure that we had a business to come back to. A curbside touchless to go system. The sales have helped a little bit for sure. Uh, but it's really the, the production that uh, has seen a big decline. From brewing three times a week to now one, it's one of many changes they've had to make to stay afloat. Our beer tenders now go out and do the to the table, and we also have switched our glassware, for example, to plastic for right now. And in downtown Las Vegas, Abel Baker Brewing. Financially, it was, uh, it was a big blow. Owners James and Randy opened their tap room in September of 2019, a brewery where locals can walk up and taste their craft beer on tap. They too had nowhere to go but curbside. 
You just kind of got to roll with the punches. I think the curbside helped us out a ton. Now that doors are back open, they take reservations only to control the tap room's capacity. Still finding a way to follow guidelines the Abel Baker way. We call them our social distancing guidelines. You know, two, only two people in the bathroom at a time. Maintain at your table with your household. Try to respect other people's social distancing, um, you know, mantras. Though they're not out of the woods just yet, both breweries owe success to their communities who have kept the love for craft beer alive. Hopefully Abel Baker's gonna 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 roll through this and it's it's really because of the support of the community and what we've done. You do what you can yep. um, as a as a passion for the craft beer community and the community that we're building here. In Henderson, Alexis Gorey, News 3.